So last week, or pro probably this the week before, because we didn't have any distinct due to the crossover. Um, so we started the second uh, chapter of James, uh, the first part from verse 1 to 13. We, we are dealing with issues of favoritism, you know, in the body of Christ. So we looked at a lot of issues there, how the poor are treated, how the rich are honored and recognized, and how the rich is uh, oppressing the poor. So we, we thought that that sort of thing should not be happening in the body of Christ, that all of us are the same. If the rich comes, we embrace them. If the poor comes, we embrace them in, same, in the same way. And then we also thought about issues to do with the royal law, blasphemy. We thought about the whole law that once, you know, obviously through the law, you cannot, you know, be saved because you can't particularly keep, keep all the law. And we also uh, discussed that there is no hierarchy as far as uh, the, the law uh, or sin is concerned, really. And once you, you break one law, you've broken all of them. So there's no hierarchy there. And then we were, we ended by uh, sort of uh, um, looking at the issue that uh, mercy always triumphs over judgment. And we are so lucky that in the eye of God, uh, the mercy is dominant. And most of the time, God doesn't punish us from the whole things, the way we upset him, but he always exercises mercy on us. And, uh, you know, that is true. And there's something we need to recognize and actually be grateful for. So today we are going to move on to look at uh, this part two. And this part two is mainly talking about faith without works is dead. So that's what we're going to look at this evening. The issue of, you know, if we say that we know God, we have faith in God, we have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and we don't back it up with good works, we are going to prove that that faith is dead. So that's what we're going to look at uh, tonight by the grace of God. Okay, so um, as I said, the main issue, the topic here will be do faith and work go together? And then we can come across or answer that question later on that say that to say that faith without works is dead. So that's, that's, that's the, the thing we are going to be looking at. Okay, so um, the general idea really is that uh, real impacting and effectual faith will have results. There's no way we, we can say that we are Christians and we, we have faith and then there's no result. There's nothing that, that some works that is coming out of our faith. That is it's not, it, we can't really justify that. So, and when you have that real faith, it has to be lived out. You know, you can't just carry it and go and be announcing you have faith, you have faith, and then people are not seeing you living it out. It doesn't work like that. So, Faith is received alone, but it does not just, just stand alone. It doesn't work out as we can see today that when you have faith, you have to couple it with good works in order for people actually to see that you are a Christian. So it is, it is to be shown. We have to show it as Christians. It's not something we don't talk by the word of mouth. We have to leave it out. We have to show it. So faith will be backed up by the proof that it is present in a person, yes. And if there is no proof, there's a good chance that uh, the, the vessel is actually empty in the first place. So if, if you're not backing yourself up with some proof of that you've got the faith, some people might start doubting you whether you have the faith at all. So for example, I'm mean, giving an example here. If you just have a label on, on a Coke that says Coke, and when you open it and pour it out in a glass, all that comes out is chicken feathers. So you may come to the conclusion that the label and the content do not make up, you know, measure up to the to each other. Okay? Yeah, it's supposed to be coke that is supposed to come out, not chicken feathers. So the same thing, the same case is, 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 is with faith. So faith is given and received by Christ's work of grace only. The finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. That is the only way we receive this. So just James, the point James is making here is not that salvation requires works. Rather, real faith will result in an outcome. 
that backs it up. We need to, there's no contradiction whatsoever with what Apostle Paul says about us being, you know, saved by grace alone. But what we are saying, what James is saying here is that, you know, the, this faith, you know, that we have to, it has to re re result in an outcome. So it's just not like we are saying and saying and we're not showing it. So faith will be lived out. Faith will be lived out. That's why I, I highlighted that in bold. Faith will be lived out in the believer's life, thinking, words, and action. In any of those things, people have to see that your faith. It's no good just saying it by mouth, but people need to see it in your life. People need to see it in the way you think. People need to think, see it in the words that comes out of your mouth and your actions. So faith will create initiative from the realization of who we are in Christ. And then we will live out our lives in him through his power and because of our convictions, who we are in Christ. Faith will create initiative from the realization of who we are. Yes. Do you often ask yourself who you are? Does that question come across to you? You say, who am I? And then if you know who you are, you know, you will um, be able to live out that faith and, uh, and have the conviction really that things are going the right direction. But when we look at it, the type of faith James is actually referring here is not the genuine faith, the saving faith, rather. It is acceptance of our lost precept. All those, those people who think that they have faith but they don't couple it with works, it's not a genuine faith. And, uh, you know, if I can also tell you, there are three, you can look at, look at faith from three different, different dimensions. One is the saving faith, okay? I need to read this out for you. If you have your Bible, you can open it to Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, and then we can have the practicing faith, and then the intellectual faith, which is the one that James is talking about here, which means you just blah, 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 blah it out without leaving it out. That's intellectual faith. And also that sort of faith will also be referred sometimes as dead faith. Intellectual and dead is the same. So faith that is not powered by Christ and not practiced by our trust and our obedience is useless, it's false, and it's dead. And it can even de be demonic. Okay? So as we're seeing, this, this passage we are studying is not only it's not about salvation, but rather how we need to live how we need to live our lives as Christians. And that is what we need to uh, realize. So if we have to look, go, go now to the Bible and look at, uh, in, in details now, let us first of all take verse 14 to 17, and then we see what you know, the Bible has said there. So the, the summarization is that James is using a rhetorical statement here. He's, he's asking what good is the effect of words and no action, okay? It's just like a, a, a statement to say of what use is your faith when there is no action coupling it. Okay, so his point is that we are not to claim faith or brag about faith if we are doing nothing with our faith. Yes, we need to be doing something with our faith. That type of faith is not real if you're not doing anything with it. So faith is demonstrated by substance and connection. Okay. And that means how we choose to live our lives and touch others for Christ. That is it. Because if you are living, if you have faith and you couple it with, with good works, others will see it. And maybe that is the way you can actually convince them to come to Christ. So it shows how our morality is applied. If we ignore our brothers and sisters in the Lord or in the world, while we boast we, we are in Christ, what good is our faith? James is asking. Okay, so our demonstrations are in, ineffectual and even detrimental to others. So faith is not a substance that is to be that, that is to stand unused. If you make reference to that scripture there of first John, you will also 
uh, find out really that you know what what is saying there about you having a effect uh, that you're not really using. It is no good for nobody. It's no good for you. It's no good for witnessing. Definitely not good for bringing others to, to Christ. So if we look at it more closely now, we can see that James uses uh, the, the word faith here as an academic affirmation, really. Uh, so the, what it means is that, you know, it, it just means that it is having a mere intellectual understanding without trusting in Christ as our Lord Jesus, as our Lord and, and Savior. Okay, so for James, the faith was not just an allegiance to doctrine, rather, it was to be a lifestyle. Yes, so it's not an allegiance to doctrine that, oh, I believe this, I believe that, I believe what the Bible says, I believe what the Bible says. No, it is to be something that we take as our lifestyle. Live it out. People see how you are living. People know you are a child of God, you know, and then you couple it up, up with, with good deeds as well. You believe in Christ, you couple it up with deeds. We're going to see, look at some examples here about, you know, when people are having faith and not doing anything with it. So it was just not an idea to believe in, but rather the purpose for our lives. Okay, I've highlighted that as well. I have highlighted that it, it has to be a lifestyle. It has to be the purpose of our lives. Also, faith is not to be passive, but rather active. Active, I've highlighted it as well. It has to be active. Yeah, it is the living spirit living in us, empowering us and growing in us. Just as that Galatians 5, if you read the level of Galatians 5, will, will instruct you. So really, you know, we need to look at these things, not as mainly an academic affirmation without backing it up, you know, with, 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 with works. So works there or deeds refer to ethical behavior. So real faith is never to be hidden, indifferent, or independent from works. That's what we are, we are the whole logic of what we're looking at tonight is all about. Now, when we go to that, um, where we were uh, from that verse um, um, 14 to 17 there, we can see that it started by saying um, in, in the verse 15, in particular, say, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute, okay, the issue naked and destitute, Okay, God has asked us to demonstrate our Christian life by helping others in need, especially the poor. So right through, you know, when you think rightly, it will create right actions. It's not about salvation, it's not about our gratitude in him and our obedience to his precepts. Here is somebody who is in a genuine need, okay? They, they, what they need here is some, you know, some help, not some good words. Okay, so we are used to doing that. Oh, bless you, bless you, my brother. Oh, it shall be well with you. When you know you can give him something, you're telling him it shall be well with him. That's not what he needs at that time. You know, at, at that sort of stage, we need less prayers and more action. This chap is naked and destitute. They need either you to clothe them give them something to eat, and you are telling him, God bless you. How can that help him? Yeah? And then look at that one there. He said, go in peace. Go in peace. This go in peace was a Jewish farewell blessing and saying. So it means, may the Lord be with you as you go away from me. Okay? So it's exactly the same thing I was saying before. You see somebody who is destitute. Probably he's out in the cold. You have a, a, an extra jacket you could have given him, and you are telling him, you know, go in peace. Yeah. No, you might then. This is what the whole essence of what we're talking tonight is all about. You might think you have you have faith, but where is your good works? And uh, there's a lot of scriptural reference there about uh, the fact that we have been commanded to provide hospitality. We have talked about the issue of hospitality before. This is a typical example whereby we are to provide hospitality. Okay, um, and then, you know, it is always good to be hospitable, to show people that we are Christians, 
to embrace them when they are in need and not only to use some very fine words to show how religious we are, yet no action. Okay? So please, if you see a, bro a brother that needs help, don't start using nice words only. If you can help them, help them. Before, I, if you accomplish with a nice word, that would be excellent. Okay, so we'll move on. And again there, uh, the issue of dead, dead. When we say that something is dead, as far as the faith we are talking about, in terms of what we are, we are talking about here, it means that something that is absolutely, totally useless without, you know, life really. I think it is being compared to be as lifeless as a corpse whose spirit has been departed from. Okay, just like a dead body. So that faith without works is just as dead as that corpse without life in them. Okay, so um, what it means though is that we have not lost our faith, rather we have never had it. it. Might be as good as not having it. So tonight you're going to be hearing a lot about faith, 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 works, faith. Again, faith. It's just not an academic subject, something we can just debate or talk about, nor is it about emotions. Rather, it must be real and it must, it must be motivating and impacting force and impacting force within us. Yes, it's not an academic topic at all. You know how all of us, it's by the grace of God that we even have the faith to start with. So it's not something that should be discussed or you have to go to college or university to, to graduate in faith. So if we have faith and do nothing with it, we are being illogical and absurd, really. Saving faith is a living faith. It will have genuine result. I think that, that statement you need, to be, you need to be underlined. If you ha really have a saving faith, it is a living faith, and it must have genuine results. Thus, our desire as Christians will be to put into practice the precepts of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not because we earn anything, really, but because we are grateful for what we, ha what we have and desire others to have it too. Okay, so when we receive, we also have to freely give. Yeah, this faith we are talking about, as I said before, is given to is by the grace of God that we even have the faith. Yes, so good works. We, by the grace of God, so anything good like that that you have acquired from God, we can freely give to others too. They 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 need it. They need it to grow. They need it to know our Lord Jesus Christ in the same way that we are enjoying that relationship. So freely, let others have it as well. Because why, why, why do we have to do that? Because our faith will have activity that tells others and God that our faith is real, okay? Because it's, it's, it's when you are relating to others, really, that these things become very important, the way you relate to others and, and what impression they make. It might be the only time that you have to lead somebody to Christ. And if your faith fails you or you're to, to, to reflect on a good work, they will say, how can he even prove to us he's a Christian? Now, we'll look, look at verse 18 to 20 now. Um, we are just talking about, you know, there's a, there will be a question now to say, but someone will say, your, your, have a faith and I have good work. Show me your faith and I will, and I will show you my good work, all those things. But what, what we are going to look at is that the fact that faith is not just belief. It's not a belief, as James tells us. Even the demons have belief in God. Belief does not save. Belief is different from faith. So faith has a deeper aspect rooted in our trust and obedience and planted in us by Christ's finished work on the cross of Calvary. That is, that is the difference. Yes. 
So it will, it will have an involvement partnership at heart. So we are fools if we were actually even start thinking that all we need to do is to believe in God and then take comfort that our salvation is assured. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> so so if, if you are thinking like that, then your assurance is not in Christ, but in your own feeble thinking. Yeah, we know that once you give yourself to Christ, that is the beginning of your Christian life, you will continue to exercise faith. You cannot just think everything is finished. Yeah. So we're going to look at this issue of if someone says, it's just a literal device to demand evidence to say, show me. So it was meant to introduce a subject to answer an objection. In other words, you cannot show me because your argument is, is unreasonable. So we're going to look at this issue about uh, show me. So again, faith is like a wind. Faith is like a wind. We can't always see it, but we can see the effect, okay? Not to have deeds with it. It's like having a flashlight, but no batteries. Having a flashlight with, with like no batteries. You can see that that one is a bit questionable. That's how we are comparing about, you know, the, the, if we, uh, 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 have, have a faith that we don't have any dates with it. Yeah, so while it was saying that show me, James is trying to challenge those with faith, to show their faith with outward fruit. Your faith has to be coupled with an outward fruit. James is not saying doctrine is unimportant, mind you. Doctrine is very, very important. Rather, if it is real in you, then it will be shown in you. Okay, so obviously in those days, the Jews were required to declare their oneness of God every day and then to exercise their faith in him. Uh, many chose only to proclaim their faith, but did nothing with it. Now, the significance of that is that that is still happening today. But the reality is that God reads our heart, whereas others read our deed. This is very important. That's why I've, I've highlighted that. Okay? Why is it important? It's important that your deed could be the only thing a non-believer sees that will attract them to you, and they could be the source of you leading them to Christ. That's why your deeds has to. That your deeds are also important. Your deeds are also important. Okay, because an unself person, it might be just that your deed that they see that very day and they decided they, they want to follow you, they want to you know, know God, it becomes very important. One God, one God. So James places an emphasis beyond this, just believing in one God, the hallmark of Jew, Jew, Jewish Sima. Um, now, the Jews were resting on their faith, on their words alone, faith to many people has become merely an intellectual exercise, but there is far more to this. There must be trust too. It's not about only faith. It's, 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 it's not enough just to believe if you have the correct doctrines. Well, so what? What, what, what are you doing with that? What have you done with it? Then he made a, uh, a comment there about a foolish, of all foolish man, yeah? So if we read actually, there you see where that comment was made. So that is in verse 20. But do you want to know, oh foolish man? So this is a very strong uh, reprimand to wrong thinking and wrong behaving. Okay, so the reminiscence of uh, the fool using the book of Proverbs and how judgment falls on, on, on that fool. So the problem is that don't be that fool. Don't be that fool. It's not, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And dead here means not to have any fruit, as in no, you know, no response from it. So dead works, fruitless work. Okay, so we look at, we look at verse 21 to 26 now, we, the, you will see that um, James was talking about particularly two people one is Abraham, and then the other one will be Rahab. 
okay? So the, the patriarchs were the principal model for Judaism in those days. So we can make reference there to Deuteronomy and the book of uh, Chronicles and Isaiah. Uh, so Abraham, for example, if we look at the story of Abraham offering uh, his son Isaac, was the climax of his faith. It was, it was the climax for his faith. So uh, for James to point them to Abraham was the ultimate means to make his case, okay? So the context is living according to God's precepts, not for salvation, but rather as a response that our salvation has impacted us in a real way. So the Jews were being challenged that they must not only know the law, they must obey it too, or it is meaningless. So it is the same thing with the Christian. We do not have to, we do not, in these days, we, do, we, uh, we, do, uh, we do not have the law nor need, need conditions for our salvation. That one has been, you know, our Lord, what our Lord Jesus Christ did in the cross of Calvary has taken over those things. But what good would our salvation be unless we are transformed by his precepts into our character? Okay, so here, James uses um, the example of uh, Abraham and Rahab. Okay, so <laughs> quite two personalities with the opposite, they are just quite opposite in their personality and the experiences and gift and call. But yet, in this context, they were united in faith. So we're going to have a look at, you know, how this has worked out, both for Abraham and uh, Rahab. Now, Abraham was saved. If we look at the, the story of Abraham, he was saved by his faith in God. Okay, so what Abraham did was prove his faith by trusting in God and then backing up that trust by his obedience to God's directives, even though it seemed irrational, really. When you look at it, it seemed very, very rational for him to give up his only son, which he has been, he has waited so long to have. So I don't know whether if that, this thing comes to me and you, how we are going to react to it. You just have only one son. Uh, and then uh, the voice come to you to sacrifice him. Uh, I think it's a difficult one. Justified. We will talk about Joseph. Abraham was justified by faith. So we see there that uh, justified normally means to be reconciled to God as Paul uses this term here. James uses it as a proof. It is not just the profession of faith that is important. It is a position of faith that matters. Okay, it's not how you profess the faith that is important here. Where they're telling us that it is the possession of faith, rather right? profession of it. Okay, we need to possess it in order for it to be real, really. So, because if you profess it, you might not possess it. Um, so, so James is uh, using this term to indicate being aligned with faith, as Paul does. So we are justified. What does that mean? That means that God has declared us righteous before himself by the only merit of our Lord Jesus Christ's redemptive work on the cross of Calvary. It is only by that that we have uh, been justified. So we have not merited it by you know, our own word or what we did or, or, or whatever. It is only by that that we have been justified. So that is important for, for, for all of us to know. So that one we have talked about that before. Yeah, so it's been made perfect. The perfect is when the true faith is visible and when it produces fruit, okay? That is when we can talk about being made perfect. Um, so faith and work are separate definitions and ideas, but they go together synergistically and are never separated from one another in somebody who thinks they are true follower of Christ. Your work and your faith has to go together. They cannot be separate and uh, you cannot separate them either. Okay? So again, let's have a look at the story of uh, Rahab. We know that Rahab trusted in God and she was saved. Rahab was a prostitute, by the way. Um, what uh, happened there was that 
She hid the spies that were sent from Joshua. She knew the city was judged and doomed and that the Hebrew were God's own people. So she was willing to sacrifice herself so that God would be honored and so that perhaps her family could also be saved too. So that is actually what uh, Rahab did that uh, landed her in this uh, uh, fate sort of group, really, that, that is coupled with good, good works. Again, Apostle Paul was another example. He was also saved by trusting in God. Then his life was radically transformed. So, you know, uh, we know about him after his life was transformed. He put a, put, a, put a lot of energy into, you know, trying to equip the church, which in the first place he was trying to destroy. His own case was also quite uh, peculiar. And we know that in this book, Paul and James did not contradict. Paul tells us outright that faith will have a response to it. Thus, Paul and James do not contradict, but rather they complement each other. Salvation is a gift, not a reward. So salvation is by the grace of God only. Condemnation is by our works. Yes, we can only get it wrong through works. The salvation is by his grace. Thus, Paul places the focus of faith on its root. We're trying now to, com to complement, see what Paul says and see what James says. If we're comparing them, we see that Paul places the focus of faith on its roots, root saving force, while James emphasizes its result. Okay? So, in other words, if you want to also to put it the other way around, you could say that Paul describes the fire of faith and James the smoke. So they complement one another well, very well. Very well. Faith without works is dead. So here is the statement that brings the controversy. However, it is misunderstood. James is not saying that we are saved by works. It's not, that's not, not what he was saying. He's saying you are saved, but big deal if you do nothing with it. And so what if you're saved? You're not doing anything with it. Okay? None of our deeds can save us. We've already learned about that. Salvation comes only by what Christ has done. So there is a relationship between faith and works. One proves the other. All too often, the focus which is to have faith is to be used for salvation when it is the Bible view that faith is not academic, but it needs to be part of our daily lives. We need to practice it. We need to live it out. It's supposed to be part of our lifestyle. It's supposed to be part of our lifestyle. And towards concluding about this matter now, we can say that it is purely by his acceptance of us that we are saved. There is nothing that we can add to it, such as good works or clean living. Justification by definition, means that God's righteousness is covering us, protecting us from his wrath and punishment as a blanket, okay? It is like getting a speeding ticket, you go into court and having the judge declare you innocent, even though you were speeding and you knew you were wrong, okay? You have been declared not guilty anymore, okay? So to God, you are clean, covered, by what Christ has done for us. To God, that's how God sees, sees you. He sees us through Christ. So this creates, once that has been done, we've been declared righteous, it creates our reconciliation to God. So we are in perfect relationship to him before the fall, if we can remind ourselves. And now we are again in harmony. That harmony is brought about through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to take great comfort with this. Okay, so it doesn't happen overnight. When you look at your salvation journey, you can know that it didn't happen overnight. Some people went to crusade for years and years and still didn't want to give up until that very day that uh, the Holy Spirit arrested you. So our faith has grace to it. 
our faith has grace to it. We will make mistakes and have setbacks, but he is there for us, carrying us through. That is the God we serve. So all we need to do is to allow him to do what he does best. Allow him to carry you along. So what that means is that no matter the amount of setbacks, no matter the amount of temptations, no matter the amount of hardship, always allow him to carry you through. Don't give up. Don't give up. But we also a call tonight. We know all of us have faith, but the main topic tonight is about coupling that faith with good works. Okay? There was a place I said that God sees all of us, but people see our deeds. How can they prove you have faith if you don't couple it with, with good works and good deeds? And as I said, also in this presentation, it could be the only day one non-believer is about to know Christ and he meets you. And you had faith, but you didn't display good deeds or good works. That soul might be missed. That is a message. Couple your faith with good works. Faith without good works is dead. Praise the Lord. I will stop here. I think we are dead on time. Um, if you have any suggestions or any any input, anything that you want to add, add on um, before we pray. Thank you.